Winter Semester Music Memorial Digital Concert. We're delighted you're here. Really sorry I wasn't able to be with you last week uh, due to the inclement weather we had here in St. John's. Uh, but this evening is a beautiful winter's evening. Uh, and tonight we have, of course, Duo Contratante and Dr. Christine Carter. So Nancy Dawn, Timothy Steus, Christine Carter coming to you with an invitation to dance. But before I introduce the concert, I, of course, want to provide a land acknowledgement. So we respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beothic. We would also like to recognize the Inuit of Nanatsivut and Nanatukavut and the Inuitisin and their ancestors as the original people of Labrador. We strive for respectful relationships with all the peoples of, of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation and honor this beautiful land together. So this evening we're in for a treat, of course, with Dual Contratante and Christine Carter. Uh, our first performers that I'll introduce to you are the, are the group that I'll introduce is Dual Contratante. And to be honest, I introduce this group all the time. So I mean, what more can I say? They are amongst Canada's finest musicians, certainly Canada's most recognized violin and piano duo. Their awards include Juno and ECMAs. They're university research professors here at Memorial University, members of the Royal Society of Canada. They've launched 12 albums. Uh, they've got more than 60 commissions, which they premiered and recorded, just a tremendous uh, output of amazing artistic work. So I thought I'd throw in something different that you might know, not know, which is that the Steve's home, the Don Steve's home, is known for Christmas cake, uh, which apparently was a tradition started by Nancy, taken on by their daughter, Clara. Uh, and this is just this delicious Christmas cake that you get every year. But I do have to say, perhaps for COVID reasons, I didn't get my Christmas cake this year. So we'll have a little chat with Nancy and Tim about that later on in the show. Uh, but I digress. Let me also introduce the phenomenal Dr. Christine Carter, clarinetist, also a faculty member here, of course, at the School of Music Memorial University. Christine has appeared in many concert halls around the world, including Carnegie Hall, the Sydney Opera House. She's been uh, a resident artist with the Mozart House uh, in Vienna, the Paul Fee Palace in Prague. She's been involved with the Mozart Festival in Würzburg, Germany, Malaga Classical Festival in Spain, the Shenzhen International Woodwind Festival, and many other uh, tremendous achievements. She's been called uh, a clarinet with striking expression seductive tone and effortless fluidity, and a golden legato. She's also part of the Irish Trio, one-third of the Irish Trio, along with Molly Carr, violist, and Anna Petrova, pianist. And just recently, CBC called their debut album, which is titled Homage and Inspiration, one of the top 10 up-and-coming classical albums to really get excited about. And speaking of albums, Christine Carter, Nancy Don, Timothy Steves have recorded one themselves called Invitation, which features works by Poulenc, Mio, Cacciatorian, and Cardi. But this evening, we're going to hear another collaboration from it for them, uh, which is Invitation to Dance, featuring works by Minotti, Stravinsky, and Srul Irving Glick. And we're really looking forward to that. And we have with us, virtually, Christine Carter, who's going to give us a few notes about the Minotti Trio. And then we'll uh, return uh, after that performance to hear from Nancy and Tim about the other work. So over to Christine Carter, who's joining us virtually this evening. Hi, everyone, and welcome to tonight's concert. The first piece on the program tonight is a trio for clarinet, violin, and piano by Giancarlo Minotti, an Italian-born composer. After his father died in his adolescence, he moved to the United States with his mom, and he enrolled at the Curtis Institute of Music, which is in Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. And there he met fellow composers Leonard Bernstein and um, also Samuel Barber, and Barber and Minotti ended up um, lifelong partners in, in, in music and, and also in their, in their lives. This piece, this trio, um, was commissioned by the Verdier Trio. So the Verdier Trio was a clarinet, violin, piano trio in residence at Michigan State University. And they commissioned over 200 works for this um, instrumentation. So they were really instrumental in making this particular group of instruments um, a well-known and established ensemble. So before there weren't so many pieces for um, this combination. The Stravinsky, which you'll hear about later, is one of the pieces that was in existence for this combination. There were a few others, one by Mio, um, and Minotti actually studied with Mio in Paris. 
Um, so this piece, they, they worked on Minotti for a number of years to convince him to, um, to write for them. And in 1989, he agreed to do it. It still took another six years before the first movement came, which was actually the second movement. Um, Minotti told them that they would have to pester him to write this. So finally, in um, 19, let me make sure I'm getting the dates right, 1995, the second movement came. And a year later, he wrote um, the second movement, which was actually the first, uh, in 1996. So in July of 1996, they premiered the two movements that Minotti had written, and they scheduled a concert um, at Michigan State University in September of that year to premiere the whole work to celebrate Minotti's 85th birthday. The only problem was that the third movement hadn't been written yet. So um, Elsa Ludwig Verder, the clarinetist of this trio, she was writing a friend about what happened with this, this third movement, and I had access to this letter, so I thought I would read you a little snippet. Minotti was arriving in East Lansing on Thursday p.m., two days before the concert. He promised to bring the completed last movement and was planning to write it all on the plane, but he forgot his glasses and couldn't see well enough to write the music. So Friday a.m., Walter took him to Pearl Vision, really, I'm not making this up, got him some glasses and then brought him to school. He began to write out the third movement, but had to interrupt to speak to a class. He worked for a while, we brought him food from the student union, and then had to interrupt again for him to attend a rehearsal of the orchestra playing his music the next day. Back to the drawing board. As he finished each page, we would take it to copy, and I would write out the clarinet part in my pitch. He got much of it done on Friday, but the last few pages were not finished till noon Saturday, the day of the concert. At one point, when he wanted to take a break near noon, his son said, no, finish the damn piece. So he did that by noon. We copied, I finished writing out the part, we rehearsed, we played it for him, we went home to get ready for the concert, rehearsed some more, and played it at the 8 p.m. concert. Minotti was famous as an opera composer, and so I think you'll hear lots of that drama and lyricism um, in this piece, so much storytelling. We hope you enjoy this piece, Minotti's Trio for Clarinet, Violin, and Piano. So there you have it from Dr. Christine Carter, some notes about the Minotti trio. What a wonderful story there involving Pearl Vision, a son telling him to get the thing done, uh, and then of course in the very last moment getting the score over to the musicians for them to rehearse uh, and then perform it that evening. So what a wonderful background uh, to this trio that we're about to hear. So please welcome Dr. Christine Carter, Dr. Nancy Don, Professor Timothy Steves with the Minotti trio for violin, piano, and clarinet.
Welcome back, everyone, and what a wonderful performance of that Minotti Trio uh, by Nancy, Tim, and Christine. I hope you enjoyed that, and of course, we've got plenty more music coming to you. The next piece is Stravinsky's L'Histoire du Soldat, and we have with us here in the studio Nancy and Tim, and I'm going to turn over to Nancy to tell us about L'Histoire du Soldat. So, Nancy, over to you. Sure. So, uh, this is Igor Stravinsky's A Soldier's Tale in English, and it was written in 1918. Um, it's in its original form, it was for a larger group of musicians, and it was to be acted, spoken, danced, and played. Um, and what was interesting about this is, is he, when he was in Switzerland in 1918, um, this was also the time of the Spanish influenza going around, and after the premiere, in the original formation with this larger group, they were supposed to go on tour, and this was canceled because of the Spanish flu. Anyway, this just sort of links us a bit to our present day, and I thought I would mention that. Um, so it tells the story of a soldier who's deserted the army, and the devil who is trying to steal his soul. And um, in the version that you're going to hear now, this is a trio arrangement, which Stravinsky did himself. And so the instrumentation in the original has a violinist and a clarinet, um, but it also has a string bass, a cornet, a trombone, a bassoon, and percussion. And so those five instruments are all dumped into the piano part, and um, Tim lucky has for, to... <laughs> lucky for Tim. Eh? Yeah, lucky for Tim. So Tim has to take over all of that. So um, the violin and clarinet parts are largely unchanged, and Tim often has a trombone solo, or he'll, he'll be playing a percussion instrument, playing a rhythmic role or accompanimental roles. Um, so um, it's a wonderful arrangement, however, by Stravinsky, and the original version has been shrunk into a suite that has five movements. So when we think of Stravinsky, we think of mixed meter, which means that the regularity of the pulse isn't there. So you don't feel a regular groove. Sometimes a measure will be missing half a beat, and so you get sort of a, a jarring um, offbeat, and the whole thing switches to a different place. Um, in the original version, it's often done with a conductor, but it, obviously with just three people, that would look ridiculous. And um, <laughs> Anyway, we do have to stay on our toes because it's pretty complicated. Um, and Stravinsky is also just an incredibly brilliant. There's just such brilliance in there and such energy. It's just such an incredible piece. Um, I also want to mention that in the storyline um, that the, um, the soldier discovers at one point that um, playing the violin um, is the one thing with which he can defeat the devil. So as a violinist, I have to mention that <laughs> critical fact. Um, and there's a long, the fourth movement is the longest movement, and in it there's a whole series of dances where the soldier is dancing with a princess and um, going through a tango and a waltz and then a ragtime. And then the fifth movement is finally where they um, get the devil to start dancing. It's a frenzied dance called the devil's dance. It's very short, it's under two minutes, and the devil um, dances to exhaustion and collapses. Um, so I think. Without much else, I will um, let us move on to the performance.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that fantastic performance of L'Histoire de Soldat and that rousing, diabolical devil's dance that rounds that piece off. Just a phenomenal performance by Christine and Nancy and Tim. Of course, we have another work on the program, and Tim is here to tell us about it. So, Tim, over to you to tell us about the Shrill Irving Glick work you're going to perform for us. Yes, the Klezmer's Wedding. We were just talking on the way over about the first time that we heard this piece. It was written in 1996. And um, <clears throat> a friend of mine had somehow managed to get the score just after it was written, and he was playing it for us as we drove around Montreal. He performed it with his sister. And we heard it then, and we thought, wow, this is an amazing, an amazing uh, piece. It's, it's in, full of joy and spirit. It's a terrific work. Um, Glick's a Canadian composer, um, born and raised in Toronto. And um, uh, he studied with Mio actually himself as well. He was with the CBC for about 20 years. He also taught at York University. He's a very prolific composer. And he wrote this piece, um, Klezmer's Wedding, for friends of his. They commissioned him to write a piece for their children. And they wanted a piece full of joy and happiness. And at, at, this was in 1996. And about that time, Glick was getting married. And so the idea of a wedding, of course, was, was very much in his head, and so these two ideas were sort of combined, and that's how the uh, a piece came to be, and um, he ended up dedicating it to his new wife, Sarah. But unfortunately, um, Glick passed away soon afterwards, about six years later, 2002, he died. But, uh, so that's kind of the sad part of the story, but the piece is <laughs> just terrific, <laughs> and uh, full of joy, and it's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun, and and it's it's great klezmer music in that it's very um, it's very uh, lyrical and melodic, and the tunes are really really striking. But the, and then there's these just elements of virtuosity. The two of them get to kind of, you know, um, well, there's some nice piano licks in there too. I must say, really, I don't want to say, but the two of them really get to show show their stuff, and uh, and uh, klezmer music, of course, performed for great celebrations and uh, weddings and birthdays and. Uh, Anyway, I've said enough. It's a wonderful piece, and you'll have great fun listening to it.
Well, that was quite an exciting piece. I just feel like going, whoo, uh, classmate wedding, fantastic. Just such vibrancy and joy and, of course, tying in with the whole theme of the invitation to the dance brought to us by Christine, Nancy, and Tim. And I want to congratulate them first before we have a little chat. And particularly, I want to congratulate uh, Christine Carter, who I know is watching online. Uh, Christine uh, has a, a beautiful young child named Max. And Max caught a little sniffle yesterday. So, of course, out of uh, an abundance of caution, Christine chose to stay at home this evening. So joining us here. So, Christine, wonderful to have you online. And thank you so much for all the phenomenal artistry that you provided in that, in that concert. And of course, we do have Nancy and Tim here with us, and uh, we thought we'd have a little chat about the concert and uh, the, the music. Um, so I'm wondering, how did this collaboration between the two of you and, and uh, Christine get going? Because you've been doing stuff together now for a few years. Mm -hmm. We, well, yeah, I think in her very first year here joining the faculty, we played the Glick on, <laughs> on the the concert to present Christine to the to the community, so that was actually the first piece we ever played with her. And, and then um, um, Cliff Crawley wrote us all of these Christmas arrangements, and um, he said to us it might be nice if, in if some of them, had maybe a third instrument in there just to sort of give a different, um, you know, a little variety of. of tone and texture and color and he thought maybe he'd write a few with clarinet so he did he wrote five of those for clarinet and so that's that's the first time we mm -hmm. sort of had a, a larger project and you recorded those pieces yeah. too right yeah <clears throat> so yeah. the listening audience can certainly <laughs> get the album and yes. <laughs> listen to the christmas you can words. you can listen to it when you eat your christmas cake oh i'm sorry you oh, we'll come back I'm, to the I'm christmas sorry. cake don't worry I'm that's sorry. that's the last <laughs> thing I'm on my sorry. agenda <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oops. Um, tell me about the, this concert. So, invitation to the dance uh, or to dance. Obviously, all the works uh, have dance themes or dance forms. Um, was that sort of a natural decision, or how do you, did you come to that organizing principle? If I sound very academic for the concert. Well, I mean, I guess it isn't completely an overarching. I mean, the Manati has dance some like. dancey-ish things, but. Certainly the Stravinsky, huge amounts of dancing going on in there, and then the Klezmer wedding, yeah. yeah. Um, it's hard to find a program that you can just have an umbrella word that just fits <laughs> the whole thing perfectly. So I think we did pretty well, yeah. two-thirds of it. It's two covered thirds, with yeah. that. Yeah. But the Manali does, there's, there are a lot of dance elements in, in particularly the, the faster move. The last move, yeah. 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 Great. yeah, for sure. There's sort of a gig feel to the, to the fast one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite part of those pieces? You mean in the whole concert? Yeah. Any, they're all up for grabs. Yeah. I mean, I choose love, a movement. Choose a movement. I don't know. I love the Stravinsky. I mean, yeah. It's just, it's just such an, it's such an incredible piece. It was just such a groundbreaking piece, and still, you know, continues to be so rewarding to work on and play and um i don't know at least for me no i that definitely i think the stravinsky it's when you're working on it you at least the piano part has all these little bits mm -hmm. and it i mean when you then when you're all together it just really comes to life so it's a really fun piece to rehearse if you don't get lost <laughs> <laughs> We could see you <laughs> counting there a yeah. little bit. Here. Sometimes no. you have to count, but it's a lot of fun to play, and the excitement and the energy is yeah. Is and terrific. the Minotti has some really beautiful some nice things. Some nice spots. I mean, yeah. Christine, if she would he were here, she would say, "Oh, and she loves the Minotti." And yeah. she she really, you know, she was championing that piece um, yeah. for sure. But there is lots of beautiful lyricism and and sort of Italian tongue in cheek humor to it, and mm. yeah. A beautiful story behind that about. Uh, um, Minotti writing it sort of en route and you know, finishing it on the day. I mean, can yeah. you imagine doing that work with just getting the score at wow. lunchtime, rehearsing it, and performing it? Well, there's it all night? too many stories like that out there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Composers who are listening, take note. <laughs> it makes us nervous. <laughs> Uh, was the, some really beautiful writing in that melody, particularly for I, I enjoyed the clarinet part in the slow movement. Oh yeah, just gorgeous. Really beautiful, yeah. yeah, the yeah. colors, the harmonies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. beautiful harmonic language the way yeah. he puts, yeah, puts things together. Yeah. So is this more repertoire you want to explore in the in the clarinet, piano, violin world? Well, yes. I'm glad we we've now learned 
these two new ones. I mean, we did we we already had played and knew the Glick from before, but yeah, mm -hmm. the Stravinsky and the and the Monoti. It's <coughs> wonderful to add those to mm -hmm. our repertoire for sure. Yeah, it's a very fun combination to play. I mean, having sort of two soprano instruments and then piano. It's mm -hmm. very different than other combinations we play with. And three masterful virtuosic musicians working together is just tremendous. Really, you know. Perhaps. <laughs> Keep that up. You're still not getting your Christmas cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did happen to my Christmas cake? So I started this off at the beginning uh, by, by mentioning the Christmas cake, but you know, that's it's kind of a tradition. Where did it, it go? Was, it's been yeah. a long-standing tradition. So, yeah, I cut out of the Globe and Mail years and years ago this wonderful recipe for Christmas cake that has crystal ginger in it. So it's really, really wonderful. And, you know, long ago I'd have a baby strapped to me while I was making it, and, and we would bring in cakes for the staff at Munn and things like that. And then, you know, as our daughter got older, she started wanting to be part of making it. And, and yeah, I don't know. This year, Clara ended up in Nova Scotia and away from us and not able to join us for Christmas. And she, you know, recently has been the one who loves making the cake. So she actually did make cakes and started mailing them all over the place. And I don't know what happened to them, honestly. Yeah. I think Canada Post has enjoyed yeah. an extra bonus this Christmas with yeah. these cakes. Yeah. So I'm sorry you didn't get one. <laughs> yeah, I remember. So there's a substantial amount of alcohol that you pour <laughs> well, over Well, this was cakes. the thing. It was soaked yes. in brandy. Yeah. It was a small package, but yeah. very weighty. And what, what caught Nancy's interest was the name. It was the article in the Globe and Mail, and it was called A Boozy Battered Christmas Cake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would be happy to get a Christmas cake in February. Okay, we'll keep okay. that in mind. You. Okay. I'll go home right now and go buy some <laughs> dried fruit. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, in, in lieu of the Christmas cake, you've given us a phenomenal gift this evening with this concert. It was just absolutely tremendous. So thank mm, you thank so you. much. Thank and, you. and thank you, Christine, uh, for, for just enormously beautiful, artistic, gorgeous playing. So very much enjoyed it. Um, and thanks for joining us here on the couch. Uh, telling Our us pleasure. what it works. What a treat. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you. Good. And I want to thank everyone, of course, for joining us this evening for the concert. The next Music at Memorial concert is next week, same time, Thursday, uh, 7.30 p.m., and we'll be featuring Jing Jia, uh, who is one of our ethnomusicology students, PhD students. But Jing is a virtuoso Gu Zheng player. So make sure you check in uh, with us next week for that concert, Jing Jia with Friends. You'll get to learn and hear about the Gu Zheng uh, and enjoy a wonderful evening again of, of fantastic music. So once again, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>